Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tony, and uh, I guess it's okay. Okay. And my speech today is about um, on-campus housing. To begin, this full quarter of the school year 2010 and 2011, Cal Poly Pomona is implementing a rule that would require any first-year student who does not live within a set distance from the school to um, onto uh, on-campus housing. However, I personally support a pro-choice decision um, on student housing, and for my main claim, I believe that the new rule which requires first-year to dorm would be harmful to students in three ways. First, students would have an even harder time already with um, the increasing tuition without the additional phenomenal dormitory fees. Now, everyone who's tried paying for anything in, a, in America would notice that prices are rising, and with the current economic crisis, everybody is tightening their belts in order to afford their lifestyles. And like everything else, college tuition is raising higher and higher, making it harder for the already cash-strapped, cup noodles eating college students to get an education. <laughs> Erica Brame uh, from the National Center for Education Statistics says college tuitions and fees over the past 22 years have tripled, and students are making their decisions on where to go to college more on cost instead of credentials. Also, Reba Brown, the Assistant Director of Financial Aid from Drury University, announces that, unit, um, that uh, families often have to rely on federal loans, which come through FAFSA, um, the free application for federal um, student aid. But even with federal loans, students still have to pay back their money, and the loans don't always cover the entire tuition. Secondly, on-campus um, on living could offer much inconvenience for many lifestyles. For example, a student with a more specific requirement for, um, for the diet could not be accommodated with uh, regular campus food, and obviously uh, uh, they would be, um, be more convenient to them for them to stay at home. Also, staying on campus could refrain students from seeking a part-time employment, because um, for a lot of students who live on campus, um, they cannot afford the luxury of having a personal vehicle, and that would, um, and uh, as such, would hinder their abilities to um, get um, jobs, uh, and also increase the competition for on-campus and local employment. Thirdly, uh, thirdly, uh, ever since the on-campus uh, housing rule was set forth. Um, there has been an insufficient amount of dormitories for all incoming freshmen and first year transfer students. And um, stu um, stu uh, students are unable, students are, who are unable to secure a room in the dormitories would be uh, forced to find living space within this, uh, the high cost uh, suites, which would further increase their um, cost, uh, living cost expenses. And for my conclusion, I, would, I, I completely respect the fact that you know, the school is trying to produce funds because of the massive budget cuts, and that's going on, but there's, is there not a way to do that other than forcing students to do things that some would prefer not to do? And it is to my contention then to say that uh, the new rule which requires first years to dorm would be harmful to students. Thank you. All right, the technical stuff on uh, structuring and claims is all fine. So you label the proposition clearly. I think in the opening section you kind of rushed the preview and I think you want it to be a little bit more complete. But when you get to the individual points, you signpost them clearly. So nobody's going to get lost listening to the speech. You do a pretty good job on those things. I like some of the language that you used also. So there's some clever ways of expressing ideas there. And uh, that helps uh, add a little bit of credibility and make you seem uh, like you're trying to relate to the audience. 
audience as well. The evidence, I think, is a little bit problematic. The first point has some information on expenses, but none of them are particular to Cal Poly, and especially the housing costs at Cal Poly, I think you need to show how significant those would be, what percentage of the total amount that students are spending it would represent, <coughs> you know, and maybe some information about how, uh, you know, what the average incomes are of people who are going to the school. You mentioned later on in one of your arguments, I guess on the second point, about people having a job off campus, that would be another one of those things that if you could show that a, a substantial portion of students who are attending Cal Poly are trying to uh, pay for their own uh, education by, you know, by working, then <coughs> you know, that would make that argument a lot more relevant. On the second point, you're really dependent on hypothetical examples, and I don't doubt that some of those hypotheticals are uh, possible, but how widespread would they be? That's where you need some more of that uh, kind of statistical information. The third point is, I think, the key argument here, or at least the strongest argument on your issue, because if we don't have sufficient housing and we're making the demand that people live here and it's going to force them into more expensive housing, I think you've got a pretty legitimate conclusion here. However, I didn't hear any data that says we don't have sufficient housing for uh, first year students. You said that, but I didn't hear any numbers about how many units are available, how many students come in uh, each year, and what the disparity is between what we have available and what we need. Also, uh, there's not a significant, exp there's not an explanation about how significant the cost is between those suites that you're talking about and the dorms. So uh, that's just factual data that should be upfront part of the speech. Like I said, I thought you did a pretty nice job presenting when it came to language and, and talking to us. You need to look up a little bit more. The speech is kind of underdeveloped. You need some more content on it. All right, thank you.